Rich Kingston are part of the video crew. I do the animations that go on the screens between the acts. So I spent a good two weeks pre-festival making it look really good and punchy, something different to keep the audience occupied in between the acts. Plus we have the Twitter feed which goes on just after the graphics. So the audience can get involved. Good fun. Screen displays the information, it can vary, depends on whatever needs to be said, but mainly it's just for well, just for the bands to line up, that kind of thing. So it's plus for the animations, you can put in a bit of fun, make it a little bit special. Um, my name's Judy Badger and I run the production office and the production office manager. My job role involves many things and it's very unpredictable but initially we start off by preparing everything that crew members need to last for the week they're here. So meal tickets, laminates um, and instructions for what to do, where to camp. And uh, as the week progresses and we've processed all the crew we then go on to general inquiries which can be anything. I changed money out of euros into pounds, you know, we'd lent a library book. It can be anything, we find lost children, we report suspicious things, we do anything, it's the centre of um, information. People come here as an initial point of contact, uh, if we don't know the answer for their question we'll find out. We've got a phone with a, a comprehensive phone number list of the entire festival organisation. Um, there are very good information points that we can contact and find out whatever turns up. Yeah, my job starts really back in May, around about May when I start gathering together the crew. I've got um, 15 on my team uh, and if they're not all available or for whatever reason then I have to find more. So I start networking with other heads of departments who may have people who can't work for them this year but want to work. So I start getting the team together. Um, by the beginning of June, they're all in place. However, two still dropped out since then and you have to be replaced, you have to find replacements. So um, that's the initial thing. When I get here, then it's down to the pre preparation of these things. And it's manic for two days in a hot oven this year. Um, getting everything ready. I like everything to be alphabeticalized so that the staff in the office, it's an easy process when people come in, they can easily find from the ticket the things that they need. We're on computer this year, so we're typing things in, which we've never done before, which is rather good and much more efficient. Yeah, the main job is really getting the crew settled, uh, ready for work, uh, being fed, uh, showered, whatever they need for the time working here. Yeah. I've got 15 members of staff and they work on a rotor basis. So because they come in on different days from Sunday onwards and I have to fit them in their 24 hours voluntary work over the period in six hour shifts. It's like juggling cats <laughs> to try and get it all to work. Um, so once I've done the rotor, going by when people arrive, I don't change it. If anyone wants to change because they want to see a band or whatever, they do it amongst themselves and they notify me and we do passing out and things. So, yeah. Um, my name's Phil Tickle. I'm part of the production team at John Peel and in particular I'm also head rigger and I lead the design process for that lot. Um, I don't do creative design, I work with the design team to enable them to suss out what they can physically achieve. So I'll give them the broad parameters of the size of the thing that we can build and how much weight we can hang. Um, I don't get into the creative process about which lamp's going there and you know how it artistically looks. I'm more of a nuts and bolts make it happen. 
person and I tie in the various different departments to make that design process work together. For instance, there's no point in lighting putting a, a, a lamp right in front of a video screen. So it's just, it's just coordinating that process. I started work at John Peel um, over 10 years ago now and I've gradually taken on more responsibility as the years have progressed. Um, so I quite quickly moved to become the head rigger, which is responsible for all the lifting operations on the stage and all the structures. Um, and then uh, three or four years ago, they asked me to become production manager. Um, and this year, funnily enough, I've now gone more to the rigging side of things. And uh, I'm a production coordinator and we have another production manager taking on the donkey work of dealing with the bands. We've got too big for one person. There are an enormous number of people who work at John Peel. Um, it's difficult to exactly quantify that. I've got me and three riggers. Um, lighting department, this morning's toolbox talk, there must have been at least a dozen of them. Um, audio, we'll have half a dozen today, but that was grow. Um, video, they seem to multiply. Um, so <laughs> there's about 10 of them. But it depends whether you're talking about the technical people or the wider operation. Um, in terms of technical people, I would estimate at least 40 people to make the stage, to build and make the stage happen. Uh, so each department has a head of department at John Peel. Um, so you've got head of departments for lighting, video, um, sound, rigging. Um, and then you've got a whole stage management team who operate the show. So my role at John Peel is to build it and take it down. And we hand over to a, a stage management team who physically get the bands on and off. So there's, there's an absolute handover of responsibility from building to operating the stage. Uh, my name's Dom Adams. Uh, I'm the front of the house lighting director, which is a bit of an improvement of last year. But uh, essentially I look after all the desk and stuff at front of the house and uh, make sure the lights run smoothly. Uh, so essentially uh, throughout the week we have lots of incoming lighting designers. Um, my job is essentially just to look after them at front of the house, connect them into our rig, um, and then for artists that don't have LDs, um, we also operate them. And that tends to be in the early part of the day. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, I'm not necessarily managing anyone, to be fair. My role at front of house is kind of very solo. The people, I wouldn't necessarily say they were underneath me, but we're, I work a lot in conjunction with the people at Dimmers, um, and then Mike Smith, uh, kind of is ahead of me and kind of manages me and uh, yeah all one big team uh, I'm Mike Smith I'm the lighting project manager um, so I've been involved with the whole entire design process um, so we've designed it all in the studio and then we've come to site and then we deliver the whole lighting package working with incoming LDs and bands um, and just making sure we deliver the whole thing and also working with the BBC to get the content that they require there are 15 people that work for me on site currently. Um, I've worked on here for eight years now, this is my eighth year. I like the family feel of it, it's a, it's a really close-knit team here, um, it's always very friendly, um, we get a really good range of bands and artists coming through, um, yeah it's always a bit of a challenge each year which is quite nice. It's different from working on other stages because most stages just put a standard kind of design together just to receive all the artists but we try and put something a bit more special, a bit more kind of spoke to John Peel stage in so it's still a little bit different. Karen Hayden and I'm the catering boss. Uh, here in the canteen at the John Peel stage, I have done all the previous planning leading up to this weekend and uh, basically I've created the menus, I talk everybody through um, how to cook all the dishes and we feed everybody here on site. Uh, we were first here on Sunday setting up, um, everything had already been delivered for us which I did previously um, and then we had a few people to feed on Monday then it kicked in properly with the crew here for John Peel on the Tuesday um, and now it gets crazy. Uh, the logistics here um, for breakfast uh, we're serving 7.30 to 10 um, bit after for the stragglers uh, we're doing full English for everybody we're able to serve veggie and vegan 
um, and cope with dairy-free people, gluten-free people. Um, and that's a fairly basic, as you would imagine, full English breakfast. We've got a bunch of the crew who focus on the cooking, a bunch that focus on the serving, and then a bunch of us are behind the scenes starting to prep for lunch, in fact, from breakfast. And then we rapidly run into lunch, change of shift. Um, we're prepping everything for lunch from, you know, literally as breakfast finishes. Um, again, with crews on the different areas. Uh, and then from there, we might manage, you know, a sneaky little sit down and a cup of coffee, and then it's kicking in for prep for dinner time. Overall, across the entire Tuesday to next Monday morning, um, it's approximately 7,000 meals. Um, and number of people is a bit of an infinite sort of number because it just depends we have a certain number of crew so it's around sort of 300 but then other people um, in sort of other crews but within the John Peel site um, can buy meal tickets so it's a kind of we're told that words getting out that our food's good and that's why more people are coming which you know is what you want but victims are our own success and that. <laughs> we are running tea and coffee 24 hours a day so we generally sort of finish around sort of midnight to one by the time we've sort of finished clearing. Obviously we have a break, um, but finish clearing around sort of 12 and one and fill everything up for the night. And then we're back here six o'clock, ready to start prepping for breakfast. My name is Gary Williams and I'm an owner of Camper Coffee. Our primary role is basically to serve the support staff and anybody else related to John Peel backstage. So we're here basically for these guys. So it's not a, an, an all day thing for us. So when people want us, we're here, we provide coffee for the guys that are working all around the clock. Uh, here on John Peel, there's four of us working. Uh, three of us working properly and one of us struggling to get her out of bed every morning but there's, there is, there's supposed to be four of us here, yeah. It's, it's, it's strange, unless you work here, it's really hard to try and tell people, explain to people what it's like because I have friends that work in other stages and they all would like to work at John Peel. I have other people that I know that work backstage at a tech on other units but John Peel is where they want to be because it's a nice, relaxed, informal, Everybody's here to support each other. There's no, you know, we're doing this, we're doing that. Everybody works together here, which is really good. But the other guys, I don't know if they experience the same level of that, but you know, the guys here have created a really great atmosphere. So yeah, there's not a lot we can add to that really. Uh, Aidan Lynch, uh, I'm the bar manager of uh, yeah, the Sessions Bar at the Champion Stage. We, well, basically provide the bar and the alcohol to uh, to the stage. So it's a, it's a bar somewhere for all the crew to chill out and relax afterwards, have a bit of a party when they finish work, and uh, meet and get together with each other when they come and meet up here once a year. I came on site probably early, so sort of late last week, delivered a few things uh, on Friday, and then sort of all the proper deliveries and everything starts happening from Saturday, or say Sunday, I mean. Um, so. Marquis erected on Saturday and yeah, we sort of start filling it with all this stuff, build a bar. We're open from 12 till 3 every day from when the festival starts, well from Wednesday. And uh, yeah, got about 20 something bar staff and uh, people that sort of decorate, put the lighting in, all that kind of thing. We've got a 40 foot uh, refrigerated unit at the back, basically an uh, articulated lorry. Uh, fridge trailer that we use as a cellar and so all the beer set up in there and then we've got a sort of normal pub cellar sort of hidden around the back of the curtain there keep everything nice and cold and running um i think we've been all been doing well we've been working on this stage since before it was the john peel stage and it's just quite a nice community family sort of people that we all sort of really look forward to coming together and meeting up with each other once a year and sort of um, I think if it wasn't for that we probably wouldn't still do it it's the fact that we all look forward to seeing each other and having this little party in the field together once a year pretty much or uh, our own little community within the festival I think. Uh, I'm Jim Fox and I'm the area organiser for the John Peel stage. Really just making sure that everybody is doing their job so that all the all the infrastructure is put in place the sound the lighting all, all the different teams um, that make up the John Peel stage uh, are put together so I coordinate that um, everything from the toilet cleaning to the the bar and the whole lot of it 
all that goes on here. The first uh, festival I did, Glastonbury, was in 1983, and I actually came along as a punter. And I came along with my guitar, and I went around all the little stages up in the what was then the Greenfield area, um, just trying to get a, a spot on, on the stages, on the small stages. Um, the following year, I was asked to back, come back as a performer, and that turned into working as a compare on some of the, st the, the smaller stages, and then eventually working as a compare on the Avalon stage. Uh, and then in... Um, it was, Next year would have been our 20th anniversary, well, will be our 20th anniversary, only we haven't got a festival next year, um, of, of this stage. Um, initially, we were the, the, new, the new band stage, and um, a whole crowd of us came over from Avalon to, to set this up here. Um, and I worked then as the compare, and then as the stage manager, and now eventually worked, myself, worked my way up um, to be the area organiser. So I've been doing that for about, I guess, five years, I think. The, uh, the, the changeover, the change of name from the new band stage to the John Peel stage happened when, when John Peel died and as a tribute to him um, it was decided by the festival and Michael Evis that we would rename the stage John Peel stage. He spent a lot of time here um, mainly because of the types of bands that we were, we were focusing on a lot of new up and coming bands um, back then. And uh, yeah, he was, he was often seen around here in his shorts and his wellies. <laughs> John Peel himself sort of, he was known for bringing in new new bands and really sort of championing them, championing them. Um, <laughs> and um, I think we, we, we still do that. We have a lot of, a lot of new bands, particularly in the earlier part of the day. Um, and then more established bands later on. But it's, it's, it's bands that, I don't know, don't often get the opportunity, I think, to, to to come out into a bigger festival audience than this. Um, and looking back, I mean, we, a few years back, quite a few years back now, we had, um, we opened up one of the mornings, one of the days, 11 o'clock in the morning, the first band on was Coldplay. And um, nobody who knew who they were, you know. And we've had so many bands like that, that they're, they're with us one year, and then the following year, they're, they're on the pyramid. Um, so it's great, I mean it's really good exposure for them to be on the John Peel stage and especially now that we get um, TV coverage all the time, you know, we're, we're on live on pressing one of the buttons that you do on modern televisions. <laughs> it's much, much bigger, much bigger um, and the bands are bringing more um, more intricate productions with them, you know, I mean it's a, it used to be bands would turn up with just their instruments and um, you know the back line and a backdrop. Now it's a lot of video stuff, a lot of a uh, lot of technical stuff going on. Bigger lighting shows. Um, so it is a it's a much much bigger thing now than it was when we started. All well, as you know, we do um, we invite a lot of students in, um, and we've got quite a few people that came in as students as as part of their course and coming along for the experience of it, who are now. Um, I've got really serious um, jobs here. I mean, one of them, Kim, came in as a student one year, and now she's our our access and transport manager, sort of looking after all the logistics of getting the vehicles in to the site and getting them off site and sorting out where we park up the touring buses and things like that. So, and yeah, she came in as a student just to just to work on the stage crew. I think it was. So my name's Kim Johnson and I am the Logistics and Access Coordinator for the John Peel stage. So I deal with all of the logistics of the vehicles that are coming in um, for the bands, uh, it could be even the, the rig, the D-rig, uh, catering, bar, whatever happens backstage of John Peel in terms of vehicles, I make sure they get in and they get out. Uh, I also look after all of the gates, uh, which means that pedestrian-wise, everyone coming in on foot, whether they're artists, whether they're crew members, uh, they have access or don't have access, as might be the case. So, a rough number of how many people kind of work under you? Uh, there's 45 people who work under me, so it's, uh, it's quite a large crew. What, what are involved in those roles? I'm going to have to go. Yeah, I need to go. Good. That's Yeah, they'll 
stay for roughly about six hours. Um, Kim receiving, over. Right, okay. So you're pretty much on call all the time? Uh, yeah, for about 18 to maybe 20 hours um, over the Friday, Saturday and Sunday especially. And then Sunday night we'll do the loadout for the whole stage. So that'll mean that probably it'll be a 5am or 6am and that eventually I go to bed. Okay. So yeah, so the John Peel site itself is, um, is quite large now. Um, and our main gate is up towards the main gate of the whole festival and then the arena area of the stage is further in. So there's a, a large roadway that I have to kind of go up and down. It's too far to walk in reality. Sometimes I have to get to one gate to another relatively quickly. So I tend to cycle around on my bike. Uh, and it just means that I can get from gate to gate quicker than an Arctic or a tour bus can get down the trackway because they have to go at five miles an hour. The TBA artist has had a massive impact on, on the dock this year. Um, they've got in total something like 10 vehicles, which includes four tour buses, uh, two Arctic lorries and a whole load of people carriers, random bits and pieces and surprise kind of deliveries here and there. Uh, and apparently I've got to house every single one of those vehicles down at the stage. So that's been interesting and that's before I've even had to think about any other artist. I've had to get them in. So it's been a busy morning. It's been, yeah, it's been non-stop since eight o'clock this morning till three o'clock. So I take my crew round on the Tuesday before we officially start working on the Wednesday. And we have to, all the gates are different. We have a range of vehicle gates and a range of pedestrian gates. Some of them mix up in a pedestrian and vehicle. So it's about really briefing the crew so they understand what the requirements of that gate are. And at different points, different passes and different wristbands get you into different areas. So it's, it's quite a challenge to move from one gate to another. It's better to kind of get to know one and, and stick to it so that you know exactly what you're letting through at any given point. I'm Nigel Mason, working on the John Peel stage, looking after the toilets. Uh, so working here in the John Peel stage, I look after the toilets. Um, in doing that, it's checking there's toilet paper there for everybody because it's an essential part of life and make sure there's compost there to put down the toilets after they've been used. Um, we go around four or five times a day checking that that's okay. We have a, an immense team of three. Uh, myself, my lovely wife Joy, and Cameron, someone who also helps out. The simple way of working is you, you do what you need to do to go into the toilets, and then the compost is sprinkled on top. And the great thing about the compost, unlike other sorts of toilets, uh, the compost helps to deodorise, and then over time the, the waste product in the toilet uh, becomes a compost itself, which can be used on the land at a, at a later date. While well, working around here, the people are so friendly. You meet some amazing characters in the toilets. So working on the John Peel stage, um, whether I'm going around at half past six in the morning or at midnight, it's just meeting the people. They're friendly, they're helpful. And I suppose lots of people would think doing the toilet run is a menial task, but the gratitude we get from the, the users of the John Peel stage is amazing. My name's Thomas Morrison. Uh, I do the supervisor from John Peel. Make sure all my guys are doing their jobs properly, checking wristbands, uh, helping people out. So we now we'll have 10. By tomorrow we'll have more. Yeah, we've got guys doing the gates and the build up. In the show days we have guys about 12 in the pits, giving water to the uh, people in the crowd. Yeah, we don't, we don't do it. Um, we, we get one or two casualties with, uh, with the heat and most of it's, most of it's fine. It's really quiet, they're all chilled out. I came here on Tuesday. That's when I start Tuesday on in the John Peel. Eight o'clock in the morning and I come on just take over from the night shift and they report what happens at night time they tell me just in case there's any trouble. But there's none so far. It's most, most chilled out. It's, it's, uh, the bands are the highest in the John Peel. They're good bands, you don't get much trouble with the crowd surfing and that. You may get one or two doing it, but you don't get as much on the other, like the other stages. 
it's a wee bit easier from here. If I do the main stage, it's harder on the main stage than the other stage, and as in John Peel. My name's Ellen Ford, and I'm RTA's on team leader. Um, so basically we're in the production office, Artist is an office just behind me here, um, and we basically deal with mainly production managers, um, touring managers, so as they come in to the office, give them wristbands, um, sort out meal tickets for them, give them day passes to the backstage area. Um, we also like order them lifts from different places, from stage to stage, that sort of thing. Um, so there's me and Becky in the office as our um, team leaders, um, but there's six of us over the three days. Um, and then we have um, a dressing room manager and another three dressing room assistants as well. So they work under that. And then obviously Donna, who's, who's above us. Um, I mean, I don't really know much about the other stages as such. But I mean, back here, it's just a great atmosphere. It's like being one little family. And yeah, it's just great to just walk in and everybody be so welcoming. And, you know, it's just, yeah, it's such a fun job to just be able to chill out backstage and you know pop up onto the stage and watch an artist or something. Yeah so when the artists arrive um, they obviously most of them are quite tired or you know been touring around traveling that sort of thing so the main thing that we tend to do is give them a nice big smile <laughs> make them happy um, and yeah just have a bit of a chat with them make them laugh you know. Um, it's very rare that we get anyone come in that's stressy or anything like that they seem most of them seem to be quite chilled and happy to be here. Yeah. My first job when I took over as area organiser um, for the Jean Peel stage was to declare the whole area as a stress-free zone. So all that panic that often happens at these events when things are going wrong, we just try to keep it really calm and that way everybody stays happy and you find you just get more things done a lot, easy, a lot more easily. So Jean Peel stage, stress-free area. My name is Frank and I'm a hydrotherm massage therapist and I'm working here at uh, Glastonbury John Peel stage backstage offering one of the therapies that are available here. This therapy uh, is designed to enable people to lie on their back for the whole time that they actually receive the massage. They do so uh, by floating on cushions of hot water which enables us to support the body fully while I'm able to actually massage them uh, from below the actual body using their body weight under my fingertips. It's a very in-depth massage, it's the only system that allows this to happen in the whole of the world so it's quite unique and developed in Britain. So it's a lovely addition to the therapies that are available here for all the stars and crew. That ranges quite a lot. Uh, we get, do get the stars that come in after they've been doing a session on the stage there and they've actually managed to uh, get themselves really wound up and all that sort of uh, lovely sort of experience of that and then they come out to chill out and relax with us uh, and then we get the crew that have been doing the days of work beforehand and uh, they get pulled muscles or sort of overstretched here and running around all night and things like that and the tension that can mount there we manage to release that tension as well and uh, that's another sort of thing. We do get the occasional sort of visitor as well who uh, come along with the stars and they a bit inquisitive to find out what's going on. Uh, it's really nice to actually be able to help everyone here, so that's really good. Um, well, myself and my partner Kerry, we uh, managed to, uh, well, we became friends with uh, Jim and Kira. Jim uh, runs the backstage area here and Kira runs the green room uh, team. So, um, as therapists uh, back in West Wales, we were also friends and uh, they saw us in different shows working and they came along and approached us and said, look, we like what you do. Uh, would you consider helping us out? Sometimes it can be noisy. <laughs> we go with the vibration of it all, but no, it's fabulous. Uh, it's a great team here. We have a lovely sort of uh, ethos of, of being sort of supportive of each other. Uh, so we all work really, really well, and, and they sort of, uh, it, it comes out in the rainbow color of what we do and how we are as people. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful, really relaxed environment, and it's fun. You'll see 90% of us smiling as we're doing our job. So I'm Kira Jones, and I'm the Green Room Organ Basically we turn a 9 by 9 meter marquee into a beautiful peaceful space for the artist to come and hang out and relax um, and we put on therapies in the corner of the green room um, and then also in the therapy cabin as well. Um, so seven years since I've actually been working here um, but I'm Jim Fox's wife so I've been coming as part of the, the John Peel family for longer than that. It changes every year. It started off with just the two of us, so that was seven years ago, and bit by bit we've expanded, and so has the green room and what we are able to offer. Um, so we've got a team of seven therapists, as well as all the green room team. 
Um, so altogether, maybe 12 people probably. So we've got a whole load of different types of massage. Um, we've got a chiropractor and he also does some dry needling acupuncture. Um, we've got Reiki, reflexology, stress release, um, all sorts. But it's hard work but it's great fun and we, and we get to make a difference to people. Um, and but with the therapies you can see people who have maybe in touring or tour managers who are feeling quite stressed and they leave just really relaxed and chilled out. Mm, well, I think there's nowhere quite as colourful, nowhere quite as chilled out. People, people who go to different stages come here and say just how relaxing it is and how they walk in and they just take a deep breath and a sigh and they feel instantly better. Um, so people often come out and, and hang out here and maybe bring their laptops and do a little bit of work in, in a chilled environment. It's quite interesting as people walk in, just some people have said, I want, I want you to come do this in my house because it's so beautiful. <laughs> and so it was a few years ago that, that Jim decided that it was going to be a stress-free area. And I remember he brought um, one of his singing bowls and played it in the production office and instantly it made a change to the vibration. And I think we've kind of built on that each year. Um, so the green room in particular, people come just to really relax. Um, and, and we don't like we've got the screens on showing what's on the stage, but we don't have any sound with it. And so it's it's like a little bit of an escape for people, a bit of a, of a haven. And um, so I think with the therapies and yeah, we've got little little treats for people, like different sweets and lollies and things, and, and people just come and sit here and relax. <laughs> Uh, my name's uh, Fergus Gordon, and I'm video crew, it says here. Uh, mainly, I'm looking after the video projection for the two iMag screens either side of the stage, thanks all the projectors work. Um, run out all the cables for that, and uh, show, help and assist the students to running out camera cables, help them getting set up, um, and then just yeah, looking at, look, probably looking after stuff that comes out of the cabin as opposed to in the cabin, because PJ's in there. James Simon looking stuff in there, and I'll do all the hard work outside. Um, there, there's two, well, there's four individual fees to the two pairs of projectors on, on towers either side. So you've got two two projectors, the 20 lumen Panasonic 20 lumen K, 20K lumen projectors, and we just double them up to give a nice, big, bright, colourful image. And then we've got a live backup just in case one of them fails. We've always got something on the screen. Uh, I do a lot of my work with the Richard Church students, which is good fun, it's interesting. Um, I've known one or two of them as well, being local as well, some chap from Langport. Um, yeah, it's good, it? it makes you, you, you realise how it helps you in describing things. Because if they look at you blankly, you realise you're not doing a very good job of teaching them, um, or they do it all wrong. So it's quite satisfying when you tell them how to do something, tell them how to do something and they do it right. And it's good. My name is Jim Elvey and I'm stage manager. It's, it's quite simple really, I've just got to get the bands on and off on time and we have quite a strict schedule because we have things like the BBC and uh, noise curfews. Um, and I have a team of about three, um, three groups of eight people. So um, we have quite a long day. We start at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning and we don't finish until about quarter to 12. So it's quite a long day, so essentially we get all the band's stuff on stage, we set it up, we get them on and we get them off. And it sounds quite simple, but in fact, when you're lining up three or four bands at a time, there's quite a lot of gear, a lot of people on stage, and a lot of um, lighting, sound. I mean, there's so many layers to it. So yeah, I'm basically trying to sort all that out and make sure that no one dies. And um, yeah, and get the show on. That's basically my job, yeah. I think there's the core group. I've got, so three groups of eight, that's just the crew. Then we have lighting, which is about three or four, rigging, three or four people, um, and sound, we've got about three or people. So as you go through the departments, it does build up. So I'm, you know, there's a, probably access of 100 people on stage sometimes. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, yeah. Sometimes parts of the day, it can be really empty, but um, during the, the afternoon and evening slots, it's, uh, it's really busy. One of the best things about working on Jim Peel, I think, is the volunteers. A lot of the crew are voluntary. Um, and they've given up their time to do it. And I, I think that's a, quite a noble thing to do. Um, and, and what that does, I think, bringing the volunteers in, it just brings a bit of a family feel to it. So we get the same people coming back and doing it. Um, 
they get a bit of food, they get the camping, they get hot showers and stuff like that, but they don't get any money, they're not paid. So I think that's one of the best parts of it. I think it brings a certain vibe to it and a certain energy that I I've certainly haven't experienced before with solely professional crew, yeah. My name is Martin Dale and I am the compare for the John Peel stage. What I do is I come on, I jump onto the stage and announce the bands that are coming on. If there's any messages, any um, uh, announcements or anything they need making to the audience, I'll do those. And uh, generally try and risk up a bit of a good uh, atmosphere on the stage. So there's the stage manager who's, um, who's my immediate boss uh, and, and I'm working together with the other people who are on, on the stage. Uh, there's probably about uh, yeah, five, six people involved in that team and then you've got the bands of course uh, are involved in the, the process of coming on stage and going off. Uh, I think the best thing about the job is just being here. Uh, it's, it's the, the atmosphere backstage at John Peel stage is incredible. That you, you get to uh, be around wonderful people for, for the week. Uh, the whole atmosphere is just just incredible. That actually, I think is the best thing. It's always it's it's always fun to jump on stage and get the atmosphere from the from the other side of the stage, from the, the front of house and the the audience and all the, all, all the atmosphere that's there, that's, that's a great thing as well. But just being here is just, just fantastic. so lucky here to have such a good team and that makes makes my work such a, so much easier. People talk about being part of the John Peel family here um, and we do actually have some of John's family, the actual family, um, coming in, staying with us over the weekend. But it is, it's a real family atmosphere with, with the crew. A lot of us have worked together for a long, long time and we all know each other and we trust each other. Honestly, I, I guess working on the John Peel stage, the best bit is the atmosphere that we have backstage. We we really are a family. We're a we're a team. We we know each other really really well. Everyone trusts each other to get on with their job role, and it works. Uh, what makes John Peel special about a stage? Number one, it's remembering the great man John Peel, who introduced so many acts to um, the world of music. It's the environment within it, the friendliness of in it, and I suppose coming here year after year. And yes, it's the John Peel stage, but it's almost like the John Peel family. Brilliant, good, good, uh, good people. Production staff are brilliant. They'll do anything for you. And we'll try, we'll try, do it back for them. I would say that it's it's like a family. There's a really beautiful feel about it all, and people come because they love working as part of this stage. Um, and it's just really good to, to work alongside people you get on with so well. Some of the John Peel stage in one word, what would that word be? Boom Shanker. Uh, John Peel stage in one word, it's John Peel, which is two words, but John Peel is music, which is happiness, which is fun. <sighs> wow, eclectic. <laughs> that is the one word in total, absolute. From the music to the people to the everything that's involved in it, it really is. I know I get goosebumps from thinking about it. It's absolutely brilliant. Family, epic family. <laughs> Home, different, unique. There you go. Different, unique. It's how I would describe it. Oh, I'd say it's definitely a stress-free zone. Family. Buzzing. It's impossible to describe. Impossible to describe. I've never had a job like it. It's, I can't really sum it up, to be quite honest. I think awesome, probably. Yeah, awesome is close, but doesn't quite get there. Family. Yeah. 
family. Stupendous. In, in one word, if I just sum up the whole thing, we, what we've experienced here all comes down to one person, I'd say it'd be Jim. Family. That sums up the John Peel stage, the crew. Um, everyone is one big happy family. Family, really. So we all been doing this together for so long. <laughs> if, I, if I can use a hyphen, I would say love tribe. In one word, no. <laughs> um, we, we, not only have we got a, a, a team that we've worked together with for years, but we find we have an audience that keep coming back to us. Um, lots of the punters like to camp near the John Peel stage and spend time here. Again, because of the atmosphere that's created. Um, there's something, I mean, we're in a tent. Uh, it's a big tent, we can get a lot of people in there, but it still has a, a sort of a sense of intimacy. Uh, and I think that's a great thing. Because these days, I mean, it's, to see a band, a great band, you're often in arenas or you know, big sort of open air stages like the Pyramid. Um, here, in the tent, you've got that intimacy, which is great. There's, there's a closeness with the band and the punters love it. I mean, yeah, yesterday, the weather was a little bit different yesterday. It was really scorching hot. And we opened up the, the main marquee, the tent there, for people to come in and shelter in there from, from the sun. And we went out there in the afternoon with bottles of water, giving bottles of water to all the guys out there. And it was just, again, the atmosphere there was just brilliant. They were so, they were grateful for somewhere to, to get out the 30 odd degree sun that we were having. Um, and even more grateful when they realized they were getting free, free bottles of water to drink, which took me back to sort of the early days of the festival when, when it first started and you'd come along and with your ticket, you'd get free milk from the dairy farm here. What do you, do you see, what do you see the future for John Peel State? Um, oh, I, I don't know how much bigger we can get. I mean, every year, as I said, we get bands coming in with much bigger productions. Um, I think we need to be careful that we don't, we don't go so big that we have to move out of a tent, you know? Um, but I, I don't know, I think we're still gonna keep, keep going with pretty much the same thing of, introducing new bands, um, up and coming bands, and, st and also having the headline bands um, that everybody knows. Cool, happy with that? Anything else you want to say that might be, you not, think might be useful to us? Not I can think of, not at the moment. Cool.